Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the Dartmouth School Committee meeting for Monday, September 26, 2022, to order. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone that this uh, meeting is being shown live on uh, Dartmouth uh, Public School YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash DHSTV Media. Also, too, uh, being uh, rebroadcast on uh, Dartmouth Community Cable, uh, DCTV's Channel 9 and 18 you know numerous times during the week and we thank them very much uh, for their help it's, it is greatly appreciated uh, if anyone has any uh, cell phones pages etc if you would kindly put them on vibrate and silence uh, chair would greatly appreciate it all right uh, that being said mr kiley you're going to take the first of dr gift and mr kiley Sure. Recognition so, of our fantastic maintenance and custodial employees. So if I could just ask, uh, ask you all to come up to the podium. We've got uh, <coughs> representatives of our maintenance and custodial staff um, here. And we tonight really just wanted to um, have an opportunity to thank everyone for their hard work. It was an uh, extremely challenging summer, um, record heat. Uh, that you know we battled that all summer uh, the conditions were very difficult and we accomplished a lot um, we've talked a little bit about the projects we worked on this summer we had um, a great deal of, of work to do in a short time and uh, you know we're able to get everything done and ready for the start of school so I really just want to make sure that you all are recognized and everyone understands how hard it is to, to make that happen and over that you know short two month period and um, you, you're very important to that process and getting ready for the start of school. So we have um, you know we have a, a great custodial and maintenance staff. I'm just going to you know name the people who are here tonight representing the bigger group. Um, we've got John Bernat, Shane Swansea, Jacob Andrade, Paula Tripp. Matthew DeMello, Kyle Paquette, Eddie Goncalo, Jose Freitas, Richie Pereira. Uh, did I miss anybody? I don't mm -hmm. think so. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank you all for, uh, for coming tonight and uh, representing the group. Thank you. Chris? Sure. I'll just say thank you all for coming out this evening. We really appreciate, I truly appreciate your hard work and dedication summer after summer. We know that's always the, uh, the busiest time and it's also the hottest time of year, uh, so especially in the building. So the, every, every September or every first day of school, I should say, the, the staff come back to uh, beautiful looking buildings. So I, I can't thank you enough for all your dedication and hard work to the Dartmouth Public Schools, so thank you. Thank you. So I'll just add my thanks and I, you know, I want to say I know we have some really old buildings in our repertoire here in the schools and part of the reason why we're able to do so much with those buildings is because of the work that you put into them to keep them not just operational but really welcoming and a, a, a great place for our kids to go to school. So thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. Kathleen? Uh, I would like to add, um, you know, in addition to taking care of the buildings, uh, I had a pleasure of <laughs> Uh, attending the open house representing the CPAC at Quinn um, last week or the week before and it's not something I didn't know because I have a student that you know I have three children that have you know that are within the Dartmouth Public Schools but to see all of the uh, kids running up to Miss Paula um, for a hug and just so excited to see Miss Paula more excited to see Miss Paula it was incredible and, and I know I have a now almost 19 year old um, young man who um, attended Quinn and it, this happens throughout the district but um, you make or break a kid's day so it's not only the physical building that you're impacting every day with what you're helping teachers and staff and uh, 
projects during the summer, but you're impacting each student every day. Um, I know it firsthand and I got to remember it by uh, what happened at Quinn. It, it was incredible. So thank all of you. All right. Um, that was beautiful. <laughs> so, you know, I have to echo that, you know, having been a classroom teacher, I just can say, that, you know, the, the janitorial staff, I mean, they were essential and they were my friends and, you know, we couldn't have gotten through the day without them and what you've gone through and what you've done for our kids over the last few years, I mean, the, the high level that you've had and the amount of work you've had to put in just to, you know, get us up and running, we, we couldn't have done it without you. So, you know, we're eternally grateful as a community for all of you've done. So. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to see you up here, and thanks for coming out. Yeah, I kind of echo my colleagues, and and that thank you. Great job. Uh, as, as hot as it was, I don't remember as a tough uh, a summer as as it was. And a lot of the buildings have things going on during the summer, so you're working in different areas that maybe you normally don't tackle, you know, in a in a systematic way type of deal. Yet you get it done. The maintenance staff. You know, going by the schools at you know 6:30 at night and seeing the maintenance crew there because there's things that have got to get done, uh, coolers and kitchens and floors being redone and, and such. It is greatly appreciated. And I'm glad we can take you know five minutes to uh, to to sit there and say thank you. You're you know you are recognized and you are noticed and it is appreciated. So thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. coming. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. That being said, we've, rec we've uh, allocated uh, 10 minutes for public comment. And I don't see anybody here that would be doing any public comment, so we'll just bounce right over that. All right, next on the agenda, approval of the regular session minutes of September 12th. So moved. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, did we roll call in? Oh. Thank you. Did I? <laughs> no. No, we, we didn't. We were just so excited to recognize know, our right. custodial staff. Sorry, I apologize. And let them roll go call, home please. Too. I apologize. John no, Thank you. You're welcome. John Newton. Yes. Mary Waite. Yes. Kathleen Amaral. Yes. Shannon Jenkins. Here. Chris We're Oliver. Excited. Here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Chris is on it. All right. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So that being said, now, next order of business will be the approval of the regular session minutes of September 12th. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Waite. Second. Second by Dr. Jenkins. On the motion, any discussion? Chair hearing on all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. All right, moving on to consent item agendas. You want to handle those? You want me to? No? Yes. Okay. All right. It's all uh, kind of yeah, normal. it's all normal stuff. Yep. Yeah. Uh, under consent agendas is uh, first one is the Quinn PTO funding requests for the upcoming school year 20. To 2023. Anybody have any questions? No. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Moved by Dr. Jenkins. Second by Miss Waite. On the motion, any discussion? I, I'd just like yeah. to, to make a note for the public record because not everyone sees this or goes through our documents. But I think again, it's always important to acknowledge <coughs> how much our community contributes to our schools. Um, that the Quinn PTO raised nearly sixty thousand dollars last year to help support our kids, um, and a lot of of what we see that goes on in the school is because of their hard work, and it's also private hard work. Yep. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, no Second. doubt about it. It's appreciated. Yep. Okay. Uh, that takes care of that one. Next one is. Oh, we have to vote. Sorry. I, I, we keep, Chris and I keep throwing you off your track tonight. Sorry. Me a curveball tonight, I'm telling you. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Porter PTO. Any questions? Mr. Porter and Mrs. McHenry are here. If there's Just any wondering questions. if we have a budget attached to this budget attachment. I didn't get I one. Didn't see it. There was none attached. Okay. 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 That's you right. know, I just wanted to say something 
too, as I look at this, um, I think, you know, it, it, it really gives a sense of, you know, understanding the community <laughs> and understanding your budget mm -hmm. that, you know, they're not coming back. I mean, we, to their folks in, to, until the spring for a fundraiser for the Boosterthon. And, and again, I think it's understanding that they have, you know, enough to cover what they need to cover in the fall. And again, I know we need, we need to articulate that a little bit more, but I, I think, you know, to Dr. Jenkins' point earlier, you know, we have so many groups who are, con who are coming to our families and our families are doing a lot of work. And when we give those families a break, um, I, I think it's, uh, it's fair and it, it's understandable that, you know, hey, you know, we don't need to do this right now and we will concentrate our efforts in this spring and that's well thought out. So yep. I, I appreciate that. Okay, so I need a motion. I'll make a motion. All right, thank you, Chris. Second? Second. Second by Ms. Waite. On the motion, any discussion? Chair hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. Those are easy, now the good stuff. Dartmouth School Music Association, fundraising request and year-end financial report. Mr. Chair, I'll move approval. Moved Second. by. Moved by Dr. Jenkins, second by Ms. Amaral. On the motion, any discussion? Again, I'll just note that the DSMA raised nearly $170,000 this year, right? The excellence of our band is due in large part to the hard work of people in this community. Yep. Yes. That's it. Absolutely. It's very appreciated. Yeah. Everyone who, who contributes in, do in money and also in, in, in work. Yep. And the, and the man hours. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no doubt I can attest to that. Yep. And someone over there can also. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I need a motion. <clears throat> so moved. I'll make a motion. Did, uh, did somebody? Oh, I think Chris actually he did. did. Chris I did. Yeah, okay. Wait a minute. Shannon did. I did this one. I apologize. Seconded. All right. Chair hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And uh, since my wife was a treasurer, I will abstain. Okay. All right. Next item is uh, DSMA uh, and the Music Department permission to participate in Band of America Championship. And this is going to be October 28th to 30th uh, down at Rutgers uh, University in Piscataway, New Jersey. <coughs> questions? Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Flint is here. If there's any questions, any, anybody has anything that needs clarified? My only question is, is in procedural, is can I vote on this since I'm, my yeah. child will go? Okay. Yeah. All right. Is this the one that typically takes place at MetLife Stadium? Is it being moved? Oh, this, is a, this is a different this one. This is a different one. This is a different <laughs> one. Ian? Yeah, so um, during the uh, pandemic, we participated in a virtual event with Bands of America. Um, this circuit's a little bit different from our usual uh, U.S. Bands nationals. U.S. Bands is divided by the size of your ensemble. So we compete in the group five, which is the largest division for US bands, um, because we have over 100 students in the marching band. But um, Bands of America is divided by school size. So we're going to a competition that's, we're gonna compete in the double A class. So we're the, there's single, double, triple, quad. So we'll go against groups. There's groups come from Pittsburgh, come from Virginia, that'll be in our classification by school size. And there's a grand champion for the event. So there's all classes go against each other in the finals competition. Okay. So there's preliminaries in the morning, where they determine the classification champions, and then at night there's a grand champion where everybody goes against each other. So this is new for us. So there'll be a bands up, upwards of 300 people in them, and then groups maybe 20, 30 people, just depends on the size of the ensemble. Um, and it, these regionals attract the top competitive ensembles from different states um, you know, into one region. So it's close to New York City, so people are making New York City trips, so we see groups from you know, six, seven, eight hours away coming to these. So pretty excited for it. It's something different for us and it's a new competition. So. Great, thank you for the explanation. Yeah. Good. All right, any other questions? Okay. I'll move approval. Moved by Second. Dr. Jenkins. Second by Mr. Oliver. On the motion, any discussion? Great. Chair hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Good luck. Good luck, yeah. Ian. Good luck, Ian. <clears throat> okay. They keep them busy. Huh? You keep them busy. Oh yeah, <laughs> because correct, Ian. Correct me if I'm wrong. We'll, when we pull out of when we pull out of New York in the morning, we'll go into Nesba Finals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that we we have four championships in two weekends. So we'll leave on Friday, um, head down uh, head down to New Jersey, do the prelims at about 12 o'clock. Finals around 8 or 9 p.m. 
and then the next day we're on at seven o'clock back up here in Reading. Uh, so we'll leave Sunday morning, drive straight up, and go to Reading for the New England Championships. So that's the plan awesome. that weekend. And then the next weekend we do a quick trip down to New Jersey, down and back on the Saturday. So we're going to drive down, do U.S. Bands Nationals, but come right back because we can only you know, really do one overnight. There's only so much fundraising you can do. Right? So, <laughs> um, so, but we we can do that as a down and back. We've done that before for Nationals. Wow. So. Right. Thank you, sir. I think there's a parent bus that uh, is going to be part for of that. Nationals. So, yeah. For Nationals, yeah. for, for, yeah. for Giant Stadium. Yeah, MetLife, I should say. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay, uh, old business. Uh, superintendent's evaluation of summative. Uh, we're going to move this to uh, our next meeting because we just got everything in, and Murphy's Law took hold this week. So <laughs> we're just going to push this to... Uh, oh, poor, I'm your, looking at the date. Yeah. What is it? October 17th. We only have one in October. 17th. <coughs> yeah, October 17th. Yeah. So we'll move it to there. Okay. Okay. Thank you for everybody for getting those in. It's much appreciated. <laughs> so we're good. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. New business. Uh, capital improvement plan update. Mr. Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Noon. So I have some good news to share. I provided you with a breakdown of um, the capital improvement plan um, articles that, that we had proposed and what has been slated uh, and included on the warrant for the October um, town meeting. So we have door and window replacement, uh, which also relates to security improvements. That um, is included on the warrant for $250,000. We have uh, Telephone, intercom, system upgrades, also related to security in some ways, uh, slated at $210,000 on the warrant. Playground improvements, $250,000. Parking lot repaving, $150,000. And furniture replacement, $150,000. So it was just over a million dollars included on the warrant uh, for town meetings. We were we were thankful, uh, you know, for the support of of the town side of government. Um, at last, I had checked. I wasn't sure if all the boards had voted on this. Um, so they may, you know, they they may uh, have a recommendation one way the one way or the other on this. But all indications were that they were going to be supportive of this. Couple items that um, were not included. Uh, so we received some funding in June, two hundred thousand dollars for technology that's already received. We the high school tennis court reconstruction. The select board voted to um, authorize use of the ARPA funds that the town received for that. So we'll be getting that <coughs> um, directly from them. And then the high school roof replacement was not moved forward at this point, and uh, really that relates to the MSBA process and the need for that window will open up um, likely in January. So we can look at applying in January and trying to determine if, if in fact, um, we might be on their list for consideration at that time, and then we could move forward for another town meeting um, you know, to, to do that. I have been made aware that roofing prices have skyrocketed um, for those projects since um, you know this, this number has been on the capital improvement plan for several years now. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll have to contend with that for sure as we, as we move forward. But um, so that's, that's where we are with the old capital improvement plan. And then we're already starting the new one. Yep. So right. um, we're starting that process in house and, uh, you know, working with the principals and, the, and um, John Bernat and facilities and uh, the directors and coming up with our new direction uh, for the next, for the June town meeting. So. Here we go. Never mm -hmm. ending. Mm -hmm. no. Never ending. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kiley. Any questions for Mr. Kiley? Dr. Jenkins. Um, can I, a couple questions. The high school roof replacement, I know we're not getting it, but that number, does that represent <coughs> out, outdated as it is total cost or our cost assuming MSBA reimbursement? Outdated total cost. Okay, so a likelihood real actual cost. our cost <laughs> if we get reimbursement at this point. Sadly, Probably. Yeah, that could okay. be. And then the second question is, since we're talking about um, capital, uh, I know you know everyone I hear everyone say, "What's that big building going up behind the <laughs> yeah. um, behind the stadium?" So maybe could you give us an update about that? Because sure. people are 
sure. Some so, rumors are flying about what we're building back there. I've heard. Um, but I've also heard, the stands. I've heard some yeah, very creative rumors. Yes. That's right, right? <laughs> oh, an indoor swimming pool? Is that oh, right? oh, oh, nice. Well, that one's better than some of the yeah. rumors yeah. I heard. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, what we are, we are building the stadium storage building there that's part of the stadium project. So in, in hopes that at some point we're able to move forward and renovate the stadium, uh, one of the things that we needed to accomplish was create space inside the stadium to hold bathrooms and concessions. Mm -hmm. um, we, one of the main benefit, one of the main benefits of maintaining the old structure was that we would be able to make efforts to come up to um, building code on bathrooms, but not have to build a whole new structure to house bathrooms. Um, so, but in doing that, we have to do our best good faith to actually try and provide as close to code as possible. Uh, there's a great deal of storage and things that, that need to, you know, need to be tucked away uh, in the stadium. So the, the storage building was a was a step to do that. We actually bid that out at a fairly good time, like before the prices kind of got absolutely crazy. Um, I mean, they were high, but they weren't as crazy as they would have been if we waited another six months or so. So I guess that's the good news there. So we're, we're constructing that. It's not, not an easy project and it's not without its delays. Um, and I think any construction project right now is problematic and that one has its problems, but we will, uh, it's nice to see some green siding on there and uh, we're getting there, we're getting there, so. Good. Excellent, thank you, that's it for me. Mr. Oliver, did you have any questions? Uh, yeah, so uh, going back to the high school roof, what's the likelihood, Mr. Kiley, that we would even be considered for MSBA funding? Um, I can't give you a definite. But I can say that I, I am going to make every effort to try and understand whether we would be considered before we put it on a town meeting warrant. So, you know, to get on a town meeting warrant, it's got to go through the whole process, right? So we've got to get through the capital improvement. We've got to first present it to the school committee for your endorsement and then go through the capital improvement planning committee and the finance committee and the select board and town meeting. Um, and we have to have votes in place that are specific to the MSBA requirements when we go to town meeting and to the boards. If it appears that that's not realistic, then we'll probably approach it in another way. Um, it, MSBA has a limited pool of funds. They're funded by a penny on the sales tax in Massachusetts. Um, they have, over the years, set different timelines, different, different um, lengths of service for things like roofs um, as their guideline for application. Ours is 20 years old, mm -hmm. probably 21 when you count that it was on the building before the building opened, and, but you know, 20, 21 years. Uh, that is all of the useful life for a roof like that. So I guess, you know, we've gotten our money's worth, but the reality is it's going to be a maintenance problem if we don't replace right. it soon. Um, but we'll make our, you know, we, it's not that we can't maintain it in a patch way, uh, but it will leak Patches. and we will <laughs> fix the leaks and string it along as long as necessary. I think there's no doubt that the MSBA will approve it at some point but it's just whether or not it'll be in the next cycle or the cycle after, or maybe it'll take 25 years to do, to do it. That's really, depends how much money they have. Sure. Mm -hmm. so. All right, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All righty. Anything else on the CIP plan? I just want to thank, you know, Jim, thank you so much for everything. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work into this and convincing yeah. town meeting and, you know, <laughs> do a really nice job. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for all your support. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, superintendent update. All right, thank you. A few things this week. As I said, we had a lot on the docket last week, so yeah. right. we've settled in pretty well. Um, all the elementary schools are working on their 
various rallies, et cetera, but um, I did have some information from Potter this week. So they've talked about uh, their whole school assemblies that they've already had and um, really celebrating. I think you've heard Mr. Porter talk about pausing to be kind, pausing to be safe, and pausing to be a learner. So they're focusing in on that. And of course, with that, they're having kiddos show how they've been kind and, and safe and, and all of that throughout the first few weeks of school. They've also started what they're calling the energy bus for kids. And it's um, a story about filling the day with positive energy and focusing on the positive instead of the negative. I've seen a lot of emails come through on that. And again, Mr. Porter wanted to share that, um, that focus that they have at the school. At the middle school, um, I'm happy to announce that um, after an interview process that the team at the middle school went through, um, Sam Madden, who is a uh, phys ed teacher right now, he's been in the district for 16 years, but he'll be taking over from Mr. Rossi as the AP when Mr. Rossi moves into the principal position um, later in the year. Good. So he came over today and, and we chatted a little bit about that. So um, the team was excited for that. And also at the middle school this week, there will be an Alice drill happening and notification will go out um, the night before um, to parents just so people aren't fearful of what's going on. So that's just one other step in the process that we're, we're doing throughout the district. I know also at the elementaries they're working on, as we talked about before, reading about staying safe book and all of that. So that's all well underway. Uh, grade seven will have a career day coming, coming next week, October 5th. So I know I've been over there many times for that. So that's always a fun time as well. The high school has a college fair coming up. I believe that's tomorrow um, where the students will be able to um, breeze through the various options that they have, including military, et cetera, et cetera. And um, of course, you all know we had our uh, dedication ceremony at the high school this past week as well as uh, at the football game and all was well attended and I think a very nice ceremony. I know Mr. Nunes wants to mention a little bit on that as well. It was just nice to see the people that attended and the emotion behind um, what this meant to them. So I was happy about that. And just lastly, uh, the district, I talked to you last time about the work that we're going to be doing about our strategic plan development, working with Learn Launch through the DESE initiative. So we had our first meeting with um, the folks that are from each school that are on that team, along with a number of other districts. So that's a virtual meeting. And, and it was a couple of hours meeting. And we'll be following up our team by ourselves before the next one, focusing in on, again, it's about fostering positive relationships. So um, that's kind of it for this past week. Thank you. Any questions for the superintendent? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Okay. Uh, my turn. Mm -hmm. Report of the chair. Uh, I get a bunch of things. Well, nothing very shattering. <laughs> uh, first, first, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Ms. Waite to uh, at, let her talk about the DEF awards that right. happened uh, last two weeks ago, yep, I think. Two weeks so ago, about a week I, and a half Wednesday. Yeah, yeah no. Be, didn't um, get a chance to get here, so. It, oh, no, no. So it's always like such a great um, evening or afternoon just to be able to hand those awards out. Um, you know, I, I just think, you know, looking back over the, the process, the DEF was formed in 2007 in a time that, you know, we were really struggling with the budget. And, uh, you know, some of those folks are still like part of this um, committee. And, and again, it's, it's you know, continued. In, and uh, I believe we gave out 11 different grants, um, as well as um, some of the grants that we weren't able to fund. The schools um, worked along with us to make sure that teachers got those um, those materials that they were looking for um so and, and i really was impressed by a lot of the grants that we and i, I think it reflects the time um, around social emotional needs um, so one of the grants we had was for the high school special education department and they were looking for weighted blankets and things like that so they would have some more tools in their toolbox and then of course we had some of the traditional we have the robotics um, but again like looking to you know, engage part of their grant they're using for middle schoolers to, you know, for their high schoolers to go over the middle school and really do some work with the middle schoolers and in introducing robotics and his recruitment. Um, so just all, you know, a really extensive range. We have, you know, puppets that were being used, but again, like to model that, you know, social emotional role playing and everything else. So I was, you know, it's, it's just a testament to, you know, the desire for these, these teachers to really bring these materials into the classroom and to excite their kids. I mean, you know, um, Mr. Parati is, you know, prime example. I mean, every year he just brings more and more equipment to his to his students and you know he's built up a great program where those kids are 
graduating from here with real hireable skills. So um, I, again, it's it's nice. You know, we, you know, uh, Dr. Tengas was mentioning before. We have lots of different groups that are really trying, you know, privately to, you know, support our kids, and it's a real team effort. So, and we're really appreciative again to uh, the schools for working alongside to make sure that we funded almost. I think. Again, I, there were, you know, I think it was only three thousand dollars that weren't funded out of all those requests. So that came about to about twenty-five thousand. So that was great. That's good. And just, and again, thank you personally. Thank you to the DEF. And you know, when you think about the fun time, the spelling bee type of deal. That you know, I mean, I can't spell I in the first person. And I, you know, I look at I look at those. Uh, it's, yeah, okay. You know, no, thank you. But uh, but seriously. That's where that money is going to, and, and, and that's appreciative. It's the little things that, you know, you talk about the fundraising that everybody has to do nowadays because, unfortunately, the budget can't, right. can't, can't take it. I mean, again, I'll go back, and I'm a, an old, you know, hat at this type of deal, but if we had the state spending, we'd have $7 million in our budget. We'd be golden. Right. So we, we don't, so we have to do what we do with what we have, and... Everyone else pitches in, and it doesn't go unnoticed, and it's appreciative. Right. So. And I did want to say, you know, Dr. Jenkins has spent a lot of time on the on the committee as well, on the advisory committee for the DF, and was a real part of this. And you know, the great thing about the spelling bee is, you know, it is such a nice community effort, and we do have our teachers and staff that you know come out and participate, and as well as you know, college in some really great costumes. So we're hoping those will continue. But although we've pushed that to the spring this year, just uh, you know, kind of looking at the funding cycle, but it is uh, notable that that event, you know, when it was, it, it's great because it really has very little overhead. So almost the entire revenues that are raised are like really pushed back into those grants, which is you know fabulous. So. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, I'd just like to congratulate uh, Rachel Lassie, who is the uh, girls' volleyball coach, uh, getting inducted into the uh, Massachusetts uh, volleyball girls' volleyball Hall of Fame. Very well deserved and such. So congratulations to her. Uh, Best wishes to Mike Capella. He's staying on as a teacher. Thank you very much, Mike. But is retiring as our boys hockey coach. So, you know, a big void to fill there. But he's been, he's, yeah, he has been here an, an awful long time. So, uh, Dr. Jenkins, uh, Dr. Jenkins, my apologies. Dr. Gifford happened to mention about the uh, plaque unveiling uh, Friday, which was just absolutely fantastic type of deal. I just want to take this minute to my colleagues who were there uh, Friday night and other, you know, Dr. Gifford and Mr. Kiley and a lot of other people. I didn't get to, to mention you. I had a time clock in the back of my head going off because of how much time we had to get it done, to get the band on, so that we didn't get bagged 15 yards for a delay a game at the start of the second half. It was not going to happen on my watch, so... Uh, I uh, I apologize if I it wasn't it wasn't plan it wasn't purposeful so I you know that that type of deal um, I left you a uh, an email that I got from Peter Chase who's the uh, director of uh, Dartmouth Cable Television uh, they're going to the uh, Dartmouth Select Board next Monday night at 6:30 uh, for their ascertainment hearing on renewing the town's cable contract and everything else and he's looking you know. <laughs> For people to show up and you know good bad indifferent on how they find Dartmouth community uh, cable television type of deal uh, I plan on going uh, I will as in full disclosure let them know that I'm you know the chairman of the school committee I'm also a member of the Dartmouth School Music Association uh, but I will also let them know that I'm there representing me I'm not you know comments are mine and not the comments of the committee or the music association so if anyone you know would like to show up you know I gave you a copy of that email and uh, you can you go from there uh, and last but not least uh, this Saturday uh, starting at uh, six o'clock uh, we've got our US band competition uh, Dartmouth, go, Dartmouth goes on at nine o'clock uh, it is uh, Ten dollars for adults and eight dollars for students to get in. So the stats it uh, it stats at uh, six o'clock. Uh, Dartmouth goes on at nine. Awards will be right after type of deal. And then two weeks later on the fifteenth, uh, we are hosting our uh, Nesbur New England Scholastic Band uh, competition. That one starts at five o'clock. Uh, again, 
10 and eight dollars uh, to get in. Uh, Dartmouth goes on schedule at this point in time to go on at 7:20. Uh, when we're finished, uh, Boston University High School College Band is going to be there to perform, mm -hmm. so which will be nice. Type of give the students a chance to see a college band uh, perform. So that's what uh, that's what's going on there. So. That's all I have. I don't know if anybody has anything else that they need to talk about, Mary. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, uh, you know, just after all the open houses, you know, I've just heard such great feedback from all of our families who attended, you know, at the elementary level, the middle school. Um, and I have to say, you know, personally going through the high school, you know, and I was going back and forth between two different kids, but it was, uh, it was phenomenal. I felt like, you know, everyone was so happy to be back, you know, some sense of normalcy. And the teachers just, you know, their excitement was really, um, you know, kept, catching on it just it was really palpable just the the feeling of um you know just hard work and dedication and and just this you know positive energy towards the new year so that was great that's fantastic and again i think it's it's just nice that everybody is back yep. unmasked you know 99.9 right. percent .9 normal yep. so Knock on wood. Every yeah. time you say that, you have to knock on wood. I don't know if these are. Well, there's a little wood here. I mean, here we go. You got the, you got the lake. I'll never you know, forget that, the that meeting with uh, with Chris, and we were all like, "Oh, you get to have the summer off. It's so great." And then it went again. <laughs> yeah. So, can't jinx it. No, not at all. Not at all. All right. Anything else? All right. Our next meeting is going to be October 17th at uh, 6:30 here in the media center. Will that be okay for you for, for warrants? I'm just thinking out loud here. I think I can make it out loud. Okay. If not, let us know. Very good. With that, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Submit. Moved by Ms. Waite. Second. Second by Mr. Oliver. On the motion, any discussion? Nope. Chair hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Good night. Thank you very much and be safe. Are we all? Mr. Cutler.